If you're in business, you're in sales. Hi, I'm Jamie Gorman, and I'm the host of Be Better at Business TV. And I'm joined today by speaker, author, but most importantly, sales expert, Mike Schmidtman of For Profit. And we're here to talk about and discuss how we can make your business be better at sales. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Jamie. So, Mike, of all the you know techniques, and I know you've given a lot of tips and done a lot of training and webinars, what are three or four sales techniques that you've seen work especially well for small, medium business, for business owners? Well, I think, Jamie, this is right in your wheelhouse as well because you do this extremely well. But as, uh, the best thing a small business person can do, especially those who don't have a big ad and marketing budget, which most of them don't, if you look at it in the light that you solve problems, Okay. You help people, you help other companies do things. How do those people find out who you are? How do they find out how good you are? How do they find out what you can do for them? Right. And so you have many low cost ways to do that through social media and through many internet types of technologies that allow people to communicate their expertise right. in a low cost way. That's great. The tried and true method for small business people is the one-on-one -on -one networking. Yes. And so many people find this difficult. And I'm one of these people, I'm very <laughs> introverted, even though I'm in sales, and there are a lot of people like myself who are introverted and who have trouble going to a business function and introducing yourself. Right. I, I get it, I recognize it. I dread these events myself. At the same time, if you wanna be successful in small business, you have to get the word out somehow. And the best, most effective way to do that is that a business function. It can be a chamber of commerce meeting, it mm -hmm. can be a, a collection of business leaders, it can be at a seminar, it can be at a rotary club, it can right. be at a charitable function, it can be any number, that, it can be at church, it can be at school. But you have to somehow, on a one-on-one -on -one way, deliver your message. And I believe the best way this, this business networking works is think about three problems you solve. Okay. So if I introduce myself to Jamie Gorman, Jamie doesn't say, I'm Jamie Gorman, I'm with Sigma Business Systems, I do this, I do this, so what, so what, so what, so what. Right. What you do is you say, I'm Jamie Gorman. I help people publicize their business in a low cost way. I help them communicate their expertise. I help them find customers. Right. That's the person I wanna to talk to. So I'm Jamie Gorman, here are three business problems I can help solve, boom, boom, boom. Okay. First of all, it's a great conversation. It's not boring, That's right. right? Yeah. Who wants to be stuck in a corner with a quote insurance salesperson telling you how wonderful their insurance product is? Nothing against insurance that. salespeople. We love you guys. No matter fact, <laughs> I would say, in fact, just flip that around. Let's say I am in financial services, which is a great profession. Don't go into a networking function saying, I'm this person, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. So what, so what, so what, right. so what? I'm in financial services. I help people safeguard their investments. I help people build for the future. I help them preserve their capital. Uh, I help them spoil their grandchildren, right? <laughs> <laughs> Have enough money to spoil That's a your great grandchildren. Right okay. there, by the way. So I'm in financial services. I help people do this. I help people do this. This is why my business is so gratifying. And so if I were insurance, I would say, look, Hurricane Sandy came through and I'm happy I've been able to serve all these people because because of my services, right. they were not wiped out in this storm. Right. They're all taken care of. That's a great business conversation. So you don't have to be extroverted. You don't have to have the quote elevator pitch. You have to be sincere and solve business problems. And if you do that, people will find you. Yeah, and I like how you kind of combined those and kind of linked them together, right? You started with kind of the online and the advertising, mm -hmm. kind of getting your message out, making sure you build awareness, mm -hmm. then the aspect of network and the one-on-one -on -one of the group selling, mm -hmm. and then coming back into the, you know, really focusing on your message. What is your message? It's not, I do this, I do this, I do this. Right. It's, here's, what, here's the end result for you. You're going to be better at business. You're going to have you know, be able to spoil your grandchildren, whatever that is, and, right. and really helping them personalize uh, what they do. And I think that's, that's a, a great, great grabber, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I may have to trademark <laughs> that and, and uh, sell it. Uh, listen, let's make that happen. Well, uh, speaking of networking, there's a, a really neat technique I heard, and this comes from 
a person I know at the National Speakers Association. Her name is Sam Horn. Okay. And she has a book called Pop, uh, How to Pop Your Success. And she's brilliant at what she does. But she talks about what she calls the valley girl exercise. Okay. The valley girl. Well, this can help you in a networking situation because what's the, what does a valley girl say? Like, you know. <laughs> well, look how you connect this into an elevator speech. For example, I do some work with Barracuda Networks, which is a spam and right. virus firewall Absolutely. company out in California. And so we use that for a Barracuda elevator speech. Like, you know, Barracuda Networks is like a moat around a castle. You know how a moat protects the castle and keeps the bad guys out. That's what Barracuda ah, does to your corporate okay. network. It's the valley girl technique. Like, right. you know. Okay. So I am like this. You know how da 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 da. And it's a great way to set up a grabber opening so yeah. you're not boring. You're yeah. solving a business problem and you're doing it in a colorful way. I had a salesperson one time and he had a great grabber. Somebody asked him, what do you do? He said, I'm Cisco's biggest nightmare. Okay. <laughs> How can you not say, well, what do you mean? What do you do? That right. brings you in, doesn't it? Right. He didn't say, I'm Jeff Neal, I work for SPS, I sell computer systems, but the, the boring, boring, boring. Right. I'm Cisco biggest nightmare. What do you mean? Yeah. Well that's a great that's a great opening and I think that that aspect of really catching people's attention, that's a little bit why I shifted to be better at business, because I realized that, you know, saying I'm a consultant, saying this is what I do. But what I really do is whatever your problem is for your business, I help exactly. you find it and, and solve it and be better at business. You do? Yeah, so I think that's a great thing. Well, one of the other aspects, uh, you know, and I talk about this class probably more than I should, but I have a workshop that, that's called mm -hmm. Business Networking for the Non-Networker. Okay. And it talks about how people not comfortable in the big room and having those grabby opening, mm -hmm. those types of things, can kind of work through a couple different, you know, easier things to do, like meeting in small groups and one-on-one -on -one type things where a lot of people are comfortable. Like I wouldn't right. say I'm good at going out and meeting a lot of people fast, but once I know you, I'm pretty right. talkative. In fact, right. sometimes people say you can't shut me up. So, but you know, it's a workshop that kind of talks through those things about here, build your network small and you keep doing that over a period of time. Then you walk into a room of 80 people and you know half the people and you're like, how did this happen, right? And so I think the networking aspect of that so is So you're a seeing great that idea. as well. So, yes, absolutely. And I bet you have stories as well where you had a person, they may be yes. brilliant at what they do, but the world doesn't know who they are. Right. Nobody knows how they can help them. If they only knew, they'd be happy to do business with them. And right. you're helping them graduate from that. Thing. Absolutely. Let's see if our audience has any questions for us. Alyssa? I hear people say that I need to ask for a sale. How can I do that better? Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, whenever you talk about techniques and, and actually people may not do it. What does that mean, ask for the sale? And kind of how do you set that up? Right. Well, first of all, that. In fact, when I interview for salespeople, uh, that's the first question I ask them is, how do you ask for the sale? And there are certainly ways to do it and ways to do it diplomatically or whatever. Nonetheless, if you don't ask for the order, uh, people will generally say, thank you, let me think about it. Right. Now, I had a guy say to me one time, he says, you know, somebody said, well, let me sleep on it. And his answer was, whoever made a decision by going to sleep? That's right. <laughs> The fact is, when you're speaking to somebody, you have all the information you're going to have. You're never going to have every bit of information. You're going to cut it off. So you, you have the information you need. Now's the time to either do it or not do it. Right. And some people call that the ether effect. They're speaking to you. They get all excited. The minute they walk away, the ether wears off. And within two or three minutes, they're never going to come back. In fact, I was in a business one time, and it was a one-call close business. You either closed them on the spot or it didn't or we would never sell them and that was okay if they didn't want to do it we were fine with that every single person would leave saying i will get back to you we called them be backs yeah they never came back in the three years i did it not one person ever came back i bet i had a thousand people promise me let me think about it i'll get back to you they never do folks right so the answer is as a small business person, if you want that business, you do have to ask for it. Now, how do you do that diplomatically without being offensive, without being pushy or salesy? But you've got to do it. Right. And so I found a very good technique, and this is actually taught by the Dale Carnegie organization in their sales class, which is excellent. They call it the progressive 
trial close. Now, what's a trial close? Uh, a trial close is instead of asking for an order, you ask for an opinion. Okay. So if I ask you, who are you going to vote for, you're going to say, oh, I don't know yet. But if I say, who do you like better? People generally have an opinion on everything, but if you ask them to make a decision, they'll want to think about it. So the trick here is to harness that to your advantage. If you're selling, ask them an opinion, an opinion, an opinion, and right. once it's clear they're ready to go, then you ask for the order. Okay. Here's an example. The, the first type of trial close is, an, again, you're asking an opinion, which is, what do you think? Now, is that a rude question? What do you think? How do you like it? Let's say you're a sign maker. Okay, you make signs for people, and you talk about what you do, how it works, all the business this is going to get, and how it's going right. to give you better visibility, all the benefits of your signs. At the end of that, you say, what do you think about what I've talked about? Sounds great. Well, in particular, do you feel this would help attract more business to your, bus to your business? Yeah, I do. Great. If you were to do this, would you prefer to do this on an installment plan or just pay cash outright? Well, I think I'd pay cash outright. Now's the time to ask for the order. So, right. well, you're prepared to go ahead. Let's move yeah, forward. Okay. But how, see how you've done that diplomatically. Right. Opinion, opinion, opinion. Ask for the order. So start off in a very simple, non-threatening way. Right. What do you think? How do you like it? Do you think this would work for you? Then if they respond positively, ask, well, in particular, how do you like this? How would this work for you? How would this financial plan work for you, do you think? Right. And then lastly is what, what you call the would you, could you. If you were to do this, would you lease it or purchase it? If you were to do this, would you want this over five years or right up right. front? If you were to do this, would you want the two-year plan or the three-year plan? If you were to do this, would you want the, the G350 or the G860? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, you don't care. Give right. them two choices and see which one they want. And when they say yes, they just bought from you. So right. I found that to be a simple, non-threatening way to ask for the business that does not give offense. If right. at any point somebody says, eh, I don't really think I like this, you back off yeah. and say thank you very much. So yeah, and a lot nice. of these techniques, they take a little bit of practice, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you have to practice them on somebody, kind of think through your mm -hmm. process. Uh, so they don't sound too rehearsed, but, but you do need to think through and kind of practice them because it's a little bit difficult if it's not a natural thing to, for you mm -hmm. to do. Uh, one of the things that I've found is I, I've actually started working through my contract, you know, that I use <coughs> for, my, for my business services. Mm -hmm. I put the scope in that contract. And so when I sit down with somebody, instead of a fancy brochure that then I have to move to a contract, I just walk them through the scope of work of what we're going to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I have the objectives in there. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of comes, you know, you work through it and then at the end there's a signature line. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll have to go back and make changes, but, but it definitely tells them that I'm mm -hmm. there to sell something. I'm not right. there just to, uh, you know, have right. the nice conversation that I'm there to, to mm -hmm. sell something. Great. So great. Well, Mike, we thank you for being here today. And was there anything you want to share? What, what's going on with Mike Schmidtman and, and For Profit? Well, well, thank you, Jamie. A, a couple things. We, our company works with companies that get stuck. And so you can tell, having been a small business owner myself for years uh, and having squandered a lot of money uh, in bad decisions over those times, so we learned some tough lessons. But it's, I have a lot of empathy for people who have their own business and want to grow. It's tough. But what they're doing right now is the right thing. They're working on their business. Right. As Michael Gerber says in the E-Myth, most people work in their business. They're busy, busy, busy. As I say, they're mopping the floor. They don't bother fixing the roof. If you spend time on your business, on your priority, and improve it, that business will grow. And that's fun, it's rewarding and profitable. So the people on this video are more likely to be growing their business because they're working on their business, Great. working with you on how to improve it. Great, thanks Mike. I'm Jamie Gorman, I'm the host of Be Better at Business TV. I'm also the CEO of Sigma Business Management. We do business planning, meeting facilitation, and business education. Uh, thank you for joining us. If, you, if this content was uh, helpful to you, please feel free to share it and share it with your colleagues and your clients and uh, come back with us uh, each Friday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time.